ओके गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग बुद्धेश गुड मॉर्निंग हरिप्रसाद रेड्डी गुड मॉर्निंग शंकर मॉर्निंग श्रीधर कि नेम द एंटी कैंसर ड्रग गुड मॉर्निंग पटन आई एम फाइन वंशी गुड मॉर्निंग नेम एंटी कैंसर ड्रग ओके राइट मेथोड रिक से टॉक वेरी गुड Expand D E C. Expand D E C. Okay, what are method tricks that is anti cancer drug? Okay, right. Expand D E C. डाइटेल कार्बमेज़ेन राइट, डाइटेल कार्बमेज़ेन ओके राइट वेरी गुड हर प्रसाद बुद्धेश शंकर वेंगडेश पर लो राइट वेरी गुड Ecto parasite. There is a typing mistake. Name ecto parasite that belongs to Annelida. Ecto parasite. Okay, right. Hyrodinia leech. Name one digenetic parasite. Digenetic parasite. Okay, ectoparasite ticks on dogs. Okay, right. But I asked Anlida. Anlida example leech. Ticks those belong to digenetic parasite. Okay, right. Very good. Vengates will give right answer. Plasmodium is a digenetic parasite. Ocarari also digenetic parasite. Okay, very good. 
okay in yesterday's class we learned introduction of biology in human welfare okay in that uh, we learned what are the contributions made by dr ella pragad subbarao okay who okay belongs to our state andhra pradesh and he is from west godavari district and what are the various contributions uh, of dr subbarao why he is called wonder man of miracle drugs okay we learned those discuss those thing then we learned what is parasitism Okay, what is parasitism? It is what type of interaction? It is a positive negative interaction. In parasitism, it is an association between two organisms which belong to two different species. One is the host, the other one is the parasite. Host, we assign positive sign to the parasite and negative sign to the host. It is a positive negative interaction. It is a parasitism is a Greek word. Okay, we learned the meaning of that one. and types of parasites based on the interaction between the host and parasite we learned five types of parasites ectoparasite endoparasite okay next one monogenetic parasite diagenetic parasite hyperparasite again, again we learned three types of endoparasite cytozoic parasite and intracellular parasite and histozoic parasite are hist intracellular parasite then the celozoic parasite celozoic and entrozoic parasite ascaris lumbricidis which lives in gut that's why it is entrozoic as it lives in the cavity it is called okay celozoic and entrozoic whereas entamoeba histolytica celozoic it is a histozoic and entrozoic histozoic and it lives in the tissues okay not in the Uh, cavities it is celozoic not celozoic histozoic parasite ascaris and but it lives in enteric parasite and histozoic enteric parasite and celozoic parasite is a ascaris okay we learned those things in yesterday's class today in today's class we are going to focus on uh, some of the things what we are going to learn in today's so what the main object to in our today's class is to learn okay types of host we are going to learn types of host okay types of host we learn then okay types of vectors after that parasitic adaptations then what are the effects of parasites okay these are very very important for ip point of view this is one four marks and for two marks parasitic castration is very important for two marks okay let us start with the types of host yesterday we learned types of parasites okay type hosts are divided into three types what are the three types of the host okay one is definitive host what do you mean by definitive host okay definitive host is also called primary host there are three types of host primary host secondary host and reservoir host primary host is also called definitive host and secondary host is also called intermediate host and the third one is reservoir host okay these are the three types of host primary host or definitive host secondary host or intermediate host and the third one is reservoir host Okay, these are the three types of host. Now let us learn what does, what are the, uh, what is the meaning of these different types of host, and what are the examples for each type of host. First one, what is meant by the host? The organism which, okay, gives shelter to the parasite. That is the host. Okay, here primary host or definitive host. It is the host which harbors the adult stages. are mature stages of a parasite okay, such host is called okay digenic uh, it is called primary host otherwise called definitive host a host okay the host okay which harbors that means which gives shelter to the host which gives shelter to okay of uh, mature stages are the okay, well developed sexual stages okay, that host is called as a primary host or we can also define in another way the host in which sexual reproduction of the parasite takes place that host is called primary host or definitive host for example let us take example okay ochre area for ochre area bancroft type parasite 
man is the primary host because worker area bank of time worker area bank crafting okay the mature stages of worker area bank of time live in our bodies okay inda nenu definition cheppina appude em cheppan mature stages a organism lo untayo okay that is called at sexually mature stages or adult stages a host lo untayo okay that host is called as a primary host or definitive host in our body if a person has okay this worker area bond graft type parasite in his body sexual reproduction takes place in his body okay the host in which okay the parasite undergoes parasite undergoes sexual reproduction that is called primary host it is also called definitive host now come to the second one plasmodium here the plasmodium is the parasite okay anopheles is the host anopheles mosquito is the host why uh, anopheles is the primary host to plasmodium for plasmodium anopheles is the primary host because plasmodium reproduces sexually in the anopheles mosquito why man is called okay primary host to worker area because worker area reproduces sexually in human beings okay that's why man for worker area and anopheles for plasmodium are called primary host or definitive host okay that's all okay primary host ante simple ga in telugu lo one more word lo cheppalante okay the okay a host lo naithe sexual reproduction jarugutundo that host is called as a primary host come to the second type of host intermediate host or secondary host okay this is a host for example plasmodium plasmodium is a parasite man is the host plasmodium reproduces sexually in man okay how can we define intermediate host the host which harbors that in which gives shelter to immature stages or larval stages or asexual stages of a parasite okay that host is called okay intermediate host the host which harbors which are we can say which gives shelter which gives shelter to immature stages of a parasite or larval stages of a parasite or asexual stages of a parasite that host is called secondary host we can also define as the host in which parasite undergoes a sexual reproduction that host is called intermediate host let us take example plasmodium plasmodium reproduces asexually in human beings you will learn more about that okay when we study life cycle of plasmodium vivax no need to worry okay next one for worker area reproduces worker area is a parasite culex is the host worker area reproduces asexually in culex asexually in culex okay that's why okay a okay simple over line lo telugu lo cheppalante ikkada a host lo naithe asexual reproduction jarugutundo that host is called intermediate host or secondary host okay now come to the third one reservoir host okay when the main host is not available for example okay for example for plasmodium okay for plasmodium when main host is not available that plasmodium the infective stages of plasmodium temporarily they take shelter in some other organism but this organism is neither gets the disease nor development takes place id ardham kavalante jagratha vinandi for example if you let us take example plasmodium plasmodium is a parasite which causes malaria okay here the plasmodium is for for some time the infective stages of plasmodium are living in monkey but monkey is not affected by that that mean monkey does not get malaria but just the infective stages of plasmodium residing it is taking shelter in monkey 
till the main host is available okay this is called reservoir for example we have reservoirs different sea asylum okay nagarjun sagar we have different reservoir okay we store water there when we require water we release water from those reservoirs and we get we close them when the water is not available we use that water which is in the reservoirs like that when main host is not available okay the for example para plasmodium okay the infective stage of plasmodium when the main host variable attack cheyadaniki andubattulo lenappudu temporarily it takes shelter in some host that is called reservoir host reservoir for the parasite neither undergoes such a definition for reservoir host plasmodium vivax plus mucarerio one say definition sir say slow the definition sir what is the difference between anopheles and culex mosquito okay anopheles and culex mosquito there are some structural differences the way they sit uh, the body the mouth parts okay in uh, okay there are some differences between in the structure of those two mosquitoes okay for example if you take edis mosquito they bite during the day time anopheles and culex mosquito the structure for there is a morphological differences between those two mosquito the way they sit okay when they sit how is their body posture in their body postures there are some differences and yes sir say definition for the reservoir host sir uh, sir slowly definition okay reservoir okay what is meant by reservoir host what is meant by host okay, the organism in which parasite lives the organism in which parasite lives for example in 10th class you learned cascuta plant okay cascuta plant or dodder plant it is growing on another plant okay the plant on which cascuta is growing that is the host the organism from which the Okay, the parasite getting nourishment okay that is the host cascuta plant gets a nourishment food from the other plant okay a plant ni theyde daniki in cascuta food does no that is the host for it okay that head lies at close singularly getting nourishment from the human body okay therefore human body human being is the host and the uh, head lies is the okay, parasite next reservoir host means what is meant by reservoir and okay? the host which harbors the infective stages of a parasite the host which harbors the infective stages of a parasite when the main host is not available that means when this primary host when these hosts are not available when those main hosts are not available okay for example okay uh, plasmodium plasmodium infective stages of plasmodium to man is sporozoite okay then meaning in it tarvat meeku ostundi for example manaki female anopheles mosquito puttinappudu mana body lokalaki infective stages enter that infective stage is called as sporozoite sporozoite sporozoic is the infective stage of plasmodium to man manaki doma kuttinappudu mana body lokalaki id enter ayi okay then we get malaria sporozoic okay is sporozoic and for example is sporozoic ki okay uh, host available ga lenappudu for example manish loki id enter kavali manish available ga ledu adappu temporary ga ekkada shelter teeskuntundi it takes shelter in reservoir host the host in which the host in which parasite okay takes shelter temporarily okay till the main host is available that is the reservoir host okay reservoir host monkey for plasmodium plasmodium lives in monkey but it neither causes disease nor develop point ante sexual cycle of plasmodium or asexual cycle of plasmodium avemi dantlo monkey lo jaragu 
బట్ అది వన్ బాడీలో మాత్రమే ఉంటాయి అవి ఓకే మంకీ ఫర్ ప్లాస్మా నెక్స్ట్ వన్ గ్నో గ్నో ఇట్ ఇస్ కామన్లీ కాల్ ఇట్ ఇస్ సైంటిఫిక్ నేమ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ కామన్లీ కాల్ యాంటీలో యాంటీలో సర్వికాప్రా అండ్ ఇట్స్ కంప్లీట్ నేమ్ యాంటీలో సర్వికాప్రా యాంటీలో ఓకే దీన్ని మనం తెలుగులో కృష్ణ జింక్ అంటాం యాంటీలో ఓకే దిస్ ఇస్ ద రిజర్వాయర్ హోస్ట్ ఫర్ ట్రిపనోజోమా గాంబియన్సి ట్రిపనోజోమా ట్రిపనోజోమా ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ ప్రోటోజోవన్ పారాసైట్ విచ్ కాజెస్ స్లీపింగ్ సిక్నెస్ అతి నిద్ర వ్యాధి ద డిసీజ్ నేమ్ ఇస్ స్లీపింగ్ సిక్నెస్ ఇన్ తెలుగు వీ కాల్ అతి నిద్ర వ్యాధి ఒక ఈ పారాసైట్ మన బాడీలోకి ఎంటర్ అయితే ఓకే ద పర్సన్ గెట్స్ మోర్ స్లీప్ స్లీపింగ్ సిక్నెస్ ఓకే ట్రిపనోజోమా ఇట్స్ కంప్లీట్ నేమ్ ఐ విల్ టెల్ యూ హియర్ లేటర్ it's a trypanosoma gambiens its complete scientific name deeniki reservoir host avante gnu you know, or antelope okay these are the three types of host their definitions and their examples okay i repeat again briefly primary host also called as definitive host primary host is also called definitive host intermediate host or secondary host and third one is the reservoir host primary host okay primary host is the host which harbors the sexual stages or mature stages of a parasite or the host in which parasite undergoes sexual reproduction that host is called primary host okay primary host lo main ga em jarutundante sexual reproduction the primary host mainly sexual reproduction takes place sexual reproduction okay, the host in which sexual reproduction of a parasite takes place that is called primary host secondary host in secondary host what takes place in secondary host i am writing here okay, in secondary host asexual reproduction asexual reproduction okay asexual reproduction takes place in the asexual reproduction takes place in the secondary host next reservoir host okay reservoir host lo okay sexual cycle gaani asexual cycle em it jaru gives just shelter to that parasite till the main host is available okay now come to the types of vectors okay in physics also you come across the term vectors in physics also you come across the term vectors but here the vector is, the meaning of vector is different in biology okay vectors are the organisms mostly insects which transmit the disease from one host to another host for example there is a person called a there is another person called b okay a has malaria b is healthy okay when mosquito bites a okay female anopheles mosquito bites a and it is spreading transmitting the disease to the b here the mosquito is spreading disease from a to b this mosquito is called vector okay the organism which transmits disease causing organism from one host to the other host here a is the one host and b is the other host okay from ikkada a ninch b ki disease theeskellind evarante mosquito sometimes it may be house fly it may be cockroach it may be culex mosquito it may be anopheles mosquito it may be some other vectors okay okay vectors generally what do they do they transmit disease from one host to the other host 
like what are the two types of vectors there are two types of vectors one is called mechanical vector the other one is called biological vector mechanical vector and biological vector okay mechanical vector in this mechanical vector the vector which transmits a disease merely just it transmits a disease but no development takes place in the no development of the parasite takes place in the host for example a person is suffering from uh, cholera okay a person cholera to suffer avutunnadu anku cholera is caused by a bacterium called vibrio cholerae okay the cholera patient when he gets gets vomitings and motions and vomit chestunnadu vomiting house when house house fly sits on that vomiting and that parasite that in that vomiting may consists of bacterium vibrio cholerae bacterium okay when house fly sits on that vomiting okay the bacterium gets attached to the body of the house fly and when such house fly sits on the food the food gets contaminated when a person takes that contaminated food okay into his body the plus vibrio cholerae bacterium enters into his body that means here the house fly transmitted the pathogen from one host to the other host okay but no development of the parasite occurred in the house fly house fly lopala in development jaragaledu just house fly for example okay we sometimes we buy uh, road side food sometimes we take pani puri sometimes we take bajji ponugu on the road side okay when you see such food item okay, so many house flies sit over them okay those we don't know what type of pathogen is attached to that para, that house fly those house flies may come from different places and when that house fly sits on those food item okay which is uh, which is sold on road side some pathogens may be present on them and when you take that food okay that is entering into your body that means here the pathogen is transmitted by house fly but no development no development of the parasite takes place in the house fly house fly lo parasitic development in general just house fly body ka attach chey adi spread out okay that is uh, uh, next another one cockroach we find this in our houses in our especially in the okay toilets we find in the drainage canals we find cockroach okay cockroach is nocturnal animal okay during night time when we are sleeping Okay, those cockroaches may move over the food item okay those cockroaches may have so many pathogens on their body the pathogens get attached to the body of cockroaches when cockroach moves over the food item if food food is not covered and the pathogens are transmitted to the food when you take such contaminated food the pathogen is entering into our body okay here neither cockroach nor house fly okay no development of takes place neither in cockroach nor uh, in a house fly okay such vectors are called mechanical vectors just they are just merely they are transferring the pathogen but no pathogen no development of the pathogen takes place and the pathogen yokka development eagle lo gaani cockroach lo em jaragadu come to the second type of uh, vector that is called biological vector what is meant by biological vector okay as i told you okay there is a person a and b okay just now i have explained you but there is one person a another person b okay a person this person has malaria okay when malaria bites this person okay some stages okay from his blood okay some stages of the plasmodium enter into gametocytes gametocytes and tarvata meeku ostundi gametocytes enter into the mosquito lo ki gametocytes and stages enter okay in this mosquito kinda meeku cheppan mosquito lo sexual cycle jarugutundi and the sexual cycle jarige em form avutundi sporozoites sporozoite 
ఈ స్పోరోజైట్ తర్వాత వస్తుంది ఇప్పుడు ఈ మస్కిటో దేంట్లయితే స్పోరోజైట్స్ ఉన్నాయి ఈ దోమ అయితే పుట్టినప్పుడు ఈ స్పోరోజైట్స్ ఇతనికి ఎంటర్ అయి ఇతనికి మలేరియా వస్తుంది అంటే హియర్ ఇన్ ద వెక్ట సమ్ డెవలప్మెంట్ అక్కడ ప్లాస్మోడియం అండర్వెంట్ సమ్ చేంజెస్ ఇన్ ద వెక్ట బాడీ అంటే దోమ లోపలికి వెళ్ళింది అది దోమ గట్ లోకి వెళ్ళింది గట్ మీన్స్ ఎలిమెంటరీ కింద ఇట్ హ్యాస్ అండర్ గాన్ సమ్ చేంజెస్ దే ఓకే దే గ్యామెట్స్ ఆర్ ఫామ్ మేల్ గ్యామెట్ ఈస్ ఫామ్ ఫీమేల్ గ్యామెట్ ఈస్ ఫామ్ జైగోట్ ఈస్ ఫామ్ దీస్ ఆల్ చేంజెస్ అక్కడ్ ఇన్ ద మస్కిటో ఇన్ ద బాడీ ఆఫ్ ద మస్కిటో ఇన్ ద గట్ ఆఫ్ ద మస్కిటో బట్ ఇన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ కేస్ ఇన్ ద మెకానికల్ వెక్టర్ హౌస్ బై జస్ట్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్డ్ ఇట్ ట్రాన్స్మిటెడ్ ద ప్యాథోజ్ నో డెవలప్మెంట్ అక్కడ్ Okay, such vector, mechanical vector, if the development of the pathogen takes place, okay, that vector is called as a biological vector. Okay, examples here, mechanical vectors, example, housefly, another example is cockroach. Okay, one is housefly, the other one is cockroach. And biological vectors. biological vector for example plasmodium plasmodium is a pathogen protozoan parasite which causes malaria okay this plasmodium in anopheles mosquito it undergoes some changes okay plasmodium undergoes some changes before it is transmitted to the another person next if you take ocarelia ocarelia bancrofti also undergoes some changes in the culex before it is transmitted to the another host that is man okay, that means that's why it is called biological vector ante ikkada biological vector ever ever ante culex is the biological vector for ocarelia and plasmodium is the biological vector for anopheles enduku plasmodium ki anopheles mosquito ki Uh, why uh, anopheles mosquito is a biological vector for plasmodium in the country the plasmodium anopheles look on the development jargon for what in coca host key transfer to work okay that's why it is called biological vectors especially in this rainy season okay we should be aware of we should be very cautious about these vectors okay these biological vectors and uh, these mechanical vectors the number of these vectors is very high okay you know public enemy number 1 public enemy number 2 there is a public enemy number 1 is called house fly is a public enemy number 1 manaki first enemy avante house fly the second enemy is public enemy number 2 is mosquito the vector which merely transmit disease due okay but no development of parasite takes place that is okay right that is called a okay, mechanical vector okay no development takes place just it merely means just it transfers the pathogen okay that's about uh, okay public enemy number 1 and public enemy number 2 our public enemy number 1 is house fly because house fly spreads many diseases ascariasis ascaris ante nulipurigulu so ascariasis antam the disease caused by round worm or ascaris okay ee gudle em avutay ante ascaris it lays 2 lakh eggs per day for example a person local ascaris has around 2 lakhs eggs per day 2 lakh those eggs come out through the fecal mat when house fly sits on the fecal mat the eggs get attached to the body of the house fly when house fly sits on the food the, the eggs are transferred to that food and that when a person takes that contaminated food the eggs enter into that person's body here house fly spreading this disease ascariasis next one cholera cholera is also spread by okay house flies typhoid typhoid unna vallu kuda typhoid is caused by biological vector Okay, biological vector means I will send you notes in that notes you will find the definitions everything okay biological vector the vector in which pathogen undergoes some changes before it is transmitted to the another host okay very good Venkat Ramana 
so uh, this typhoid is caused by a bacterium called salmonella typhi salmonella typhi is a bacterium what is the mechanical vector what is the vector for typhoid disease typhoid disease vector ever typhoid is spread by okay, typhoid is transmitted by okay, typhoid is transmitted by house fly typhoid is transmitted from one person to another person by Okay, house fly. Here vector is house fly, right? Okay, you know vectors for malaria. Malaria for vector for malaria is okay. This one Anopheles mosquito and for Filariasis is Culex mosquito. Biological vector and the vector in which K plus uh, the pathogen undergoes some the developmental stages, undergoes some development before it is transmitted to the another host. Okay, now come to the parasitic adaptations what are the parasitic adaptations you learned earlier okay xerophytes the plants which live in okay deserts okay, they show some adaptations the plants which live in water hydrophytes they show some adaptation the plants which live in okay different types of parasites different types of forest they show adaptation the plants which live in polar regions they show some adaptation the plants which live in salt water they show some adaptations Okay, the organism in which or the vector in which pathogen undergoes some changes pathogen undergoes some changes before it is transmitted to the another host okay, pathogen the organism in which or the vector the organism in which the pathogen undergoes some changes before it is transmitted to before it is transmitted to the another host okay, the organism in which pathogen undergoes some changes before it is transmitted to the another host for example plas plasmodium plasmodium ane parasite plasmodium ane parasite vakar nunchi inkoru spread ayyada appudu ante mosquito nunchi man ki vache tappudu okay vakar nunchi inkoru spread ayyada appudu for example okay domal nunchi manaku malaria vastundi for example inda cheppanu a ane person ki doma puttindi okay nen b ane person ni i am healthy i don't have malaria ఆ ఏ నుంచి దోమ నాకు బీకు డైరెక్ట్ గా వచ్చి పుడితే నాకు మలేరియా రాదు ఆ ఏకి కుట్టిన తర్వాత సమ్ చేంజెస్ టేక్ ప్లేస్ ఇన్ ద బాడీ ఆ ప్లాస్మోడియం అనేది దోమ లోపల కొన్ని చేంజెస్ అండర్గా అవుతుంది అంటే దోమ లోపల అండ్ తర్వాత ఆ డిసీజ్ నాకు అది ఆ దోమ కుడితే ఒక అది నాకు డిసీజ్ వస్తుంది అంటే ఇక్కడ ప్యాథోజన్ అండర్గో సమ్ చేంజెస్ ద ఆర్గానిజం ఇక్కడ ద ఆర్గానిజం ఆర్ ద వెక్టర్ ఇన్ విచ్ ప్యాథోజన్ అండర్గో సమ్ చేంజెస్ బిఫోర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ట్రాన్స్మిటెడ్ టు ద అనదర్ కోస్ట్ Okay, that is called biological vector okay right next one parasitic adaptations 
okay every organism in order to survive in the habitat in which it lives whether it is aquatic habitat earlier we learned some habitats earlier we learned some habitats in the beginning in the beginning topic Okay, that means you know, on the fourth day of our uh, introduction classes, we learnt different types of habitat. One is the aquatic habitat, the main habitat. The other habitat is the terrestrial habitat. Okay, whatever may be the organism, wherever may be, wherever may be it is living, whether it is aquatic habitat or marine or freshwater habitat or brackish water habitat or marine habitat or terrestrial habitat. Okay, the, whether it is living in a desert or in a forest, they have to show some adaptations in order to survive there. Parasites also, for example, okay, Ascaris. Ascaris, the habitat for Ascaris is our intestine. Our intestine is also habitat. Our intestine is also habitat for so many organisms. For example, for Ascaris lumbricoides, for Ascaris lumbricoides, okay, the Ascaris is the parasite. Mana body lo intestine lo, mana intestine and the intestine habitat. Mana the curse survive kawalante, mana body lo, mana intestine lo, mana enzymes sune, there are so enzymes. Okay, in our intestine, there is a gastric juice. Okay, the sorry, in intestine, there is a bile juice, there is a pancreatic juice, there is the intestinal juice, also called succus centricus. But a juice lunit me that to pony a habitat at that colante, the Batkalante, it has to show some adaptations. What are the adaptations shown by the parasites? What are the adaptations evolved by the parasites in order to successfully live in the host? Okay, that we are going to okay, learn here. Okay, what are the parasitic adaptations? Why parasites show adaptation? In order to live successfully in the body of the host and in order to get all the requirements, mana body local survive kawalante, okay, it has to show some adaptations. Okay, parasitic adaptation, because these adaptations are shown by parasites. Okay, next one, let us see what are the different adaptations. First one, tinea solium. Let us take tinea solium. Okay, tinea solium, you already know that tinea solium is, uh, it belongs to the phylum Platy helminthes. Okay, tinea solium, if you observe the structure of the tinea solium, this part of the tinea solium is called as nothing but like a head. Okay, this is called as colex, colex. Okay, on this colex here, Okay, there is a row, one structure called here, this is called rostellum. This is called rostellum. And there are hooks here. Okay, there are hooks here. Okay, these are the hooks. Okay, these hooks are ar arranged around the rostellum in two rows. Okay, they are arranged in two rows. Next, here there are suckers. Here there are sucker. This is one sucker, and this is another sucker. And this is another sucker. Okay, these are the suckers, and this structure is called scolex. This is called scolex. This structure is called scolex, nothing but like our head. Okay, what are the structures present here? This one, okay, this center one, this is called rostellum. Okay, this is called rostellum. And what are these two, these structures? These are called hooks. Okay, these are called hooks. And what are these structures? Okay, these structures are called suckers. Okay, these structures are called suckers. Okay, why these all structures are present in this one? Okay, tinea solium is an intestinal parasite. Mana pegul lokrun. Mana pegul potpoval. In order to, these are the adhesive structures. To attach to the, okay, some organ, internal organ. Mana body lokra, mana organ ni potpoval. Okay, dhani ki help chest. 
okay what are the structures here okay these all structures are present in which one okay tinea solium tinea solium tinea tapeworm okay tapeworm this is the neck like structure this is the neck where these are called proglottids newly forming proglottids new segments fall segments are formed from here it is like this one okay these all are segments in the body there are many segments in the body okay it is a tape worm and the tape like it is flat worms so tape worm tape worm okay these all are called proglottids proglottid each proglottid acts like one reproductive unit each proglottid can produce many eggs 35000 eggs are produced by each proglottid these are called false segments pseudo segments tarvata ostundi kadi okay this is the first point parasitic adaptation the first one okay pinea solium ane parasite it shows from parasitic adaptation what are they it consists of hooks suckers and rostellum okay why these all structures to attach to some internal organs lower internal organs lower attached cordon come to the next one ascaris ascaris lumbricoides it is commonly called round worm which belongs to the phylum ascalminthes okay this ascaris lumbricoides on its body ascaris lumbricoides on its body for example it is its body ascaris lumbricoides body on its body what is present on the body it has a cuticle it has cuticle okay this what is the important significance of this cuticle okay, when this ascaris leaves when this ascaris leaves in our intestine in as i told you in our intestine there are enzymes there are juices bile juice intestinal juice another one pancreatic juice these juices have except bile juice bile juice has no enzyme remaining juices have digestive enzyme those digestive enzymes may kill okay you are eating chicken you are eating mutton and you are eating various uh, food items okay which have protein they all are digested but ascaris is there in our intestine but it is not digested by our enzymes okay when you eat chicken okay or mutton or egg or fish it has proteins it is digested but in our intestine there is ascaris it is not digested because ascaris has a protective cuticle this cuticle can this cuticle can protects the ascaris from our enzymes from our digestive enzymes cannot uh, attack this one because it has a protective cuticle this is the uh, pro, uh, this is a parasitic adaptation shown by the ascaris lumbricoides okay protective cuticle is present in ascaris now come to the third one okay tegument okay like a cuticle in ascaris okay in the okay in these animals okay like in uh, fasciola hepatica liver flu okay in tinea in these animals over the body there is a structure called protective structure called that is called tegument okay tegument is a like our skin like uh, we have skin here in these animals okay, tinea solium and fasciola hepatica and these animal there is a tegument which also okay uh, protects that animal from our digestive enzymes okay now come to the next one anti enzyme okay tinea solium also produces tinea solium is capable of producing some anti enzymes what is meant by anti enzyme okay our digestive system as i told you it has uh, an element in the uh, intestine we have different digestive enzyme our digestive enzymes may attack tinea solium tinea solium on the other hand it is producing anti enzyme why they are called anti enzyme these enzymes are neutralizing for example this is our enzyme tinea solium producing another enzyme and this enzyme neutralizes our enzyme therefore our enzyme cannot attack that parasite okay this is called what is that anti enzyme anti enzymes are produced by tinea solium this is one parasitic adaptation 
okay i i explained you four things now up to now one is rostellum rostellum this is a rostellum this part and around this one in the two layers two rows there are hooks are present and there are suckers okay these all are shown by tinea solium this is one parasitic adaptation next one protective cuticle okay um, like we have skin over our body ascaris body is covered by cuticle that pro cuticle protects it from our dyes to enzymes when it is an it is an intestinal parasite it is an enteric parasite it is a gut dwelling parasite okay when it is living in our gut okay man gut lo unna enzymes the name em champakunda em attack cheyakunda what is it what is there cuticle is present over the body of ascaris tinea solium on the body of the tinea solium I, as well as on the body of the fasciola hepatica there is a structure called there is a uh, layer called tegumen okay adi kuda danni protect chestundi mana enzymes nunchi next one anti enzyme tinea solium ke produces okay anti enzyme those enzymes can neutralize our body enzyme therefore our body enzymes are neutralized okay therefore it can easily okay it can successfully survive in our gut next one obligatory anaerobes obligatory anaerobe obligate means mandatory mandatory obligates okay there are okay there are some parasites called entamoeba histolytica entamoeba histolytica mainly here okay this is called obligatory parasite why it is called obligatory para obligatory anaerobe obligatory anaerobe okay you know uh, in 10th class also you learnt uh, differences between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration in anaerobic respiration okay oxygen is not required for anaerobic respiration for aerobic respiration oxygen is required okay tinea sol this entamoeba histolytica when it leaves in our gut in the wall of our gut okay does not have mitochondria to carry out it does not have mitochondria to carry out okay aerobic respiration for aerobic respiration in 10th class you learn okay now tell me what are the two types of what are the two types of cellular respiration what are the two types of cellular respiration aerobic and anaerobic okay now tell me what are the three uh, steps in aerobic respiration okay shankar okay right very good correct answer aerobic and anaerobic what are the three steps in aerobic respiration okay sayed vamsi okay right right aerobic and anaerobic what are the three steps in aerobic respiration what are the three steps in aerobic respiration glycolysis anuradha glycolysis krebs cycle glycolysis okay right glycolysis krebs cycle what is the another one what is the another one electron transport chain okay where does krebs cycle occur where does quickly quickly give responses where does krebs okay ets electron transport chain etc okay what where does krebs cycle occur where does krebs cycle take place okay in the mitochondria in the matrix of mitochondria but in this uh, entamoeba histolytica in the entamoeba histolytica there is no there is no mitochondria mitochondria led kaabatti id compulsory ga anaerobic respiration cheyali okay din endukane danne em antam ante obligatory anaerobe it is an obligatory it has to carry out it has to carry out anaerobic respiration as it does not have mitochondria okay right mitochondria not in cytoplasm glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm okay next uh, krebs cycle takes place in mitochondrial matrix and electron transport chain takes place in the elementary particles or f not f1 particles 
obligatory endro entamoeba histolytica oka is obligatory parasite obligatory enero next facultative endro facultative enero okay facultative endro means okay this example here ascaris lumbricoides is a facultative enero that means ascaris lumbricoides when oxygen is available it can carry out aerobic respiration when oxygen is not available okay, it can carry out anaerobic respiration that means it can con it can survive in both uh, okay, in conditions where oxygen is present and oxygen is option but whereas this one antamoeba histolytica okay it only has mitochondria is no option even though there is oxygen it cannot use okay it has to perform anaerobic okay these all are adaptations next another one is reproductive potential in parasites another parasitic very important adaptation in in parasite there is the okay the morphological anatomical structures are simplified for example in tinea solium we didn't tell you incomplete gut first time gut anatomy we use just a one chapter make it the one the term gut we use here but in now uh, in these animals okay, there is no only one opening is present incomplete uh, opening incomplete uh, gut is present okay, there is no anus but in these parasites several structures nervous system nervous system circulatory system respiratory system they are not well developed here they are poorly developed here okay the morphological and anatomical structures are simplified whereas reproductive system is well developed Okay, reproduct. There is a lot of great reproductive potential. Okay, I will give you two examples here. Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, every day it lays two lakh eggs per day. It lays two lakh eggs. For example, if Ascaris lives in a in a person, every day the female Ascaris. There are two male Ascaris as well as female Ascaris. The female Ascaris lays two lakh eggs per day. Why there are two lakh eggs per day? But human beings just they are giving birth to one or two individual. But Ascaris it has great reproductive potential. We don't have that much reproductive potential. Human beings do not have much reproductive potential. But this lower animal, okay, this lower one, but this invertebrate has a higher reproductive potential because to increase the it has to overcome so many problems. in order to reach the new host okay there is a, the chances of reaching the new host are very less okay that's why if we produce a lot of eggs okay even some eggs may reach the new host to increase its survival chances okay it produces okay but in human beings okay our parents are uh, generally human being they give birth to one child or two child or maximum three these days in earlier days uh, four or five like that because our parents take care of them. there is our parental care but in these animals no parental care okay that's why they produce huge number of eggs and in a, in a, in expectation that at least some eggs can reach the new host and therefore they can survive okay there is a great reproductive potential that means reproductive system is well developed in parasites class completely done and any problem sir could you please explain about reproductive potential of ascaris again look right okay ascaris lumbricoides ascaris there is male ascaris and there is female ascaris female ascaris for example in his in a person's body ascaris is living both male and female the copulation the copulation takes place in our intestine the copulation copulation between male para male ascaris and female ascaris sexual inter copulation takes place in our intestine after copulation the female ascaris releases two lakh eggs okay, there was problem in chemistry class shankar nai Okay, then, okay. This Ascari is produces two um, lakh six. Okay, that means it has high reproductive potential. Potential means its strength. It has more uh, ability to produce more uh, young ones. 
okay human beings have a very low reproductive potential a female human being cannot produce 2 lakh babies in her, in her life cycle okay the reproductive potential is very less in these animals there is no parental care but when our parents give birth to anyone they take care of us but in these animals there is no take care there is no care okay, that's why they produce large number of eggs at least some eggs can reach the another host Okay, reproductive potential as per is two lakh sex nest. Another example, tinea, sonium, it can go out. Okay, each, okay, each segment, okay, this each mature segment can produce 35, 35,000 eggs per day. That means tinea, sonium has high reproductive potential. In these animals, morphological and anatomical structures are greatly simplified. Sense organs are not present in these animals. Sense organs, even they are present, they are very simplified. Moral circulatory system is simplified. And respiratory system is simplified, nervous system is simplified, but more emphasis on reproduction. Reproductive system is well developed and it is very important. But which system is well developed in parasites? The reproductive system is well developed in parasites. And another one, cystic stages. Okay, for example, if you take uh, uh, entomoeba histolytica, Tarvatmik nest lesson of the entomoeba histolytica life cycle, cystic stage. Okay, there is a cystic state. Okay, around this, uh, there is a troposite state, there is a pre cystic state, and cystic state. Okay, cyst. Okay, this is a wall. A wall is present around this structure. This is called as a cyst. This is a cyst wall. Okay, what is the significance of this wall? Okay, this wall can protect this one. Okay, it can survive under unfavorable conditions. Okay, if entomoeba histolytica vala vachya disease in and drunka virochana lanta, blood motions, amoebic dysentery. Okay, we motion to part to explain again, sir, please. Okay, right. Okay, cystic stages, entomoeba histolytica life cycle of the next class low rape start che both the life cycle of entomoeba histolytica than life cycle low three stages soon time. Okay, troposite stage, pre cystic stage, cystic stage and under. Okay, in cystic stage low, then the body point of a wall form out in the wall. Okay, this wall, in the, for example, man under man mother body lo peruthu na puru, man ke devil tagal kunda, shocks tagal kunda, man chuttu four layers under. Amnia, chorea, elantois, yolk sac. Okay, in Omnion, there is a fluid. Baby should have fluid. Okay, can you mention that fluid? In the again. What is the fluid which is present around the fetus? What is the fluid that is present around the fetus? Okay, very good. Omniotic fluid. Omniotic fluid. A fluid lay with the baby local dry potent, desiccate a potent. Okay, like eat cystic, eat to the wall under the wall, either dry a pokundas, unfavorable to tide over to overcome unfavorable conditions. It's sanipo in the pond. It cannot reach the work person in single person well lived. Okay, that's why to tide over the unfavorable conditions. Okay, it forms a wall, cyst wall around this one. Therefore, it can survive unfavorable conditions and therefore it can reach the successfully okay, This is one parasitic adaptation to tide over unfavorable conditions shown by Antamoeba histolytica. Next one, polyembryonic and smart parasites. I will explain you those two. And uh, we are running short of time. It is already twelve thirty-seven. Okay, I will uh, continue. I will uh, continue resume our lesson from tomorrow. Okay, starting from polyembryonic. The okay, remaining part will be explained in tomorrow's class. Invisible. Okay, okay, okay. I stop here. Okay, in today's class, we learned uh, okay, uh, types of 
host villain first primary host secondary host and uh, reservoir host first i started with the host then we learned vectors two types of vectors mechanical vector and biological vector then we learned what are the parasitic adaptations parasitic adaptation those things uh, we discuss some of the parasitic adaptation okay we discuss those things in today's class okay in tomorrow's class okay what are the okay effects of parasites on the host and next one uh, remaining part of this one parasitic adaptation or remaining part complete chasing okay we start uh, entamoeba histolytica life cycle of entamoeba histolytica 